So I had an interesting uh, challenge posed to me. So I have a customer that has a application where they need the machine to check and make sure that an operator removed a clamp before they continue with the next machining operation. Uh, because if the clamp is left there, um, then the machine will crash into the clamp. This could be a huge problem. So what they want to do is they want to use the probe to be able to effectively check the setup and make sure that they can continue in the process. The tricky part would be how do I how do I actually program it? How do I create the logic to check whether or not something's there? Now, in the beginning, you know, my first thought was, well, why don't I go down the path of um, of using our existing measuring cycles, right? So let's write a little program and kind of explore this a little bit because I think this is a pretty interesting topic that a lot of us um, potentially could, could apply. So I'm going to just create a quick little G-code program. I'll call it uh, clamp check, All right? What, whatever I want to call it. So the program's going to start as I normally would any simple program, right? So just give it my safety line. So I'll be in absolute mode, maybe using my work hornet G54. We'll be in G17 plane. Uh, my machine is currently in metric. I'm just going to write this program in metric. Process would be the same whether I did metric or inch. And now I want to go grab a probe. So let's go grab my probe, put it in my spindle. So we'll do a quick M6. Um, you can, sometimes I like when I'm going to do probing operations just to do a, uh, a quick orientation of the probe. So I'm just going to use a spindle, an S pause command, orient the probe to zero. Not super required. And then I'm going to wrap it somewhere close to the part. So what I did was I'm going to use this block in my 3D space to represent the clamp. So I can kind of work through two different strategies. What happens when I hit something versus I don't. So this right edge is uh, set up to be my zero. Um, X zero on the edge. Y zero is the center of it. And top, the top of the part zero. Z zero. So just to give you some, some perspective. So first thing I want to do is let's come over and put her into a scenario where I'm going to hit something, and then we can think about that versus not hit, right? So I'm going to wrap it over to, let's say, x minus 25 millimeters, uh, y zero, and let's come over to uh, z, let's say, 10 millimeters above. All right, so when I execute this, the probe is going to be sitting right over top of the part. So now I want to look at my measuring routine. So as long as you have the option for measuring cycles, you'll have the list of measuring cycles found under the measure workpiece button. I got to that by expanding my horizontal keys over. And I'm just going to use a simple edge kick. So I'm going to pick edge distance, pick the top one, and now I have the ability of um, effectively measuring in a single direction for both X, Y, or Z. So I start to set it up. I do have some options here. Um, so if I was using it in a case where I'm just checking something, I'm probably going to do a measure only. Um, then from there, I'm going to give it a position that I want to drive to. Now, remember I said the top of the part is C0. So I want to definitively drive past this point and see what's going to happen to kind of work around if I hit it or if I don't. The thing I, I want to avoid is I only want to get an alarm if it hits the object, right? So here I'm telling it I'm going to be, I'm expecting to hit something at, at minus uh, five mil. I can give it my my overrun feed. So I was 10 mil above. So it means when I get within five mil of the target, maybe I'll make this a little bigger, we'll make it 10 mil. And then I can put in some tolerance. All right, so I got a quick little cycle, M30. We're going to now run it. Machine comes over, starts to move down, it hits it and it's happy. So that would be a problem, right? I need to hit it and I need to alarm out. So I could then tighten up this tolerance amount right here, maybe say within a mil. So I'm saying, hey, if you hit anything and you're outside of a millimeter to my commanded location, I want you to alarm. Boom, okay. So now I have an alarm. So I could use this for the check. However, this is the challenge I'm going to run into. What happens if I'm in a good situation and that is I don't hit anything? So now I'm shifting my 
position over to space, and the system's going to come down, and it's going to continue to measure. There's a preset parameter that tells it how many checks it's going to do. But then what happens? I need it to move past. Unfortunately, it's going to come back, and it's going to give us a probe not switching alarm. So this, I don't personally know of a way to get around this if I wanted to use our standard cycle. So what I have to do is I have to think about utilizing something outside of our existing cycles. So that brings me to a command called mesh, uh, M-E-A-S. So the mesh command is effectively the, the root command that um, is used in all of these different measuring cycles. And it just sends the machine into kind of a move um, and then allows me to um, determine what's going to happen. So she's going to stop and then continue to the next block once it sees a pr trigger switch. So I'm putting it into a case where I know I'm going to collide. Um, I do need to give it a feed or a rapid. I would want to feed with mesh. Type in the command mesh. Oops, cursor moved. Type in the command mesh. That's your physical command. Um, you do need to give it a polarity. So it's going to be mesh equals and then a value of one or negative one. So you will have to figure out what the polarity is for your probe. Um, so, you know, when it starts to move, if, if it immediately triggers with a value of one, then your polarity might be set up backwards. You know, is the switch high or is it low? So play around with one or negative one. It's gonna be one of, one of the two on your actual system. And then I give it a, a position to go to. So I could just say, hey, I wanna go to Z and we'll go to Z of minus five mil, right? So we'll go Z of minus five mil. And then we'll just do a quick little program stop. So what the system will do here, when I run it, is it comes over, oh, and it told me I forgot my feed rate for sure. So let's give it a feed. Um, you would wanna set your feed to whatever the feed rate is that you calibrated at. I happen to know mine was originally calibrated in inch, 10 inches a minute, equivalent to 54. All right, so she comes down. She hits, so a hit effectively at Z0, that's whatever discrepancy this block is, right? And then had I not had a program stop, it would have just kept moving right along. So all the mesh command is going to do is it's going to stop when it sees the probe trigger. But now I can use that to my advantage, right? So I can potentially have it move to a point where it's going to trigger or not trigger, right? So let's just copy this code, paste it down. Instead, I'm going to go to 25 mil. So now we'll be in the air and we'll give it another program stop. So when we run it, there's our first check. I'm at my program stop. And now I come down, it goes all the way to the bottom, program stop. So it's not gonna throw up any kind of alarm. But I now have something I can work with, right? I can now play around with what I'm gonna do based on this difference of behavior. So the next thing I might wanna think about is, you know, I, I know where I'm telling the probe to go to. And effectively, as long as I've achieved that position, then I'm good. But if I don't achieve that position, then I can throw up an alarm. So how do I check the position? Well, that would really be my next step. So what I can do is I can do a couple things here. First, um, I'm going to probably want to replace my position I'm going to with some kind of a variable. Um, I can use an R variable. I can use a local variable. Um, I'm going to use, use an R variable for simplicity right now. All right. So we're going to say we are moving to minus 5 mil. And I can now replace. We'll see in a second why I added this variable. I can replace this position with my, oops, with my R variable, right? So this is gonna behave the exact same way. It's gonna come down, it's gonna hit the first one. So it's just moving to five millimeter or stopping before it. Okay, finish that. So now that I have this, I can now create a simple little logic statement to now check when I'm in a condition of you know, what's going to happen. So I could say at this point, if 
And there's a variable that I'm going to use, and I happen to have it pre-selected, so I'm just copying it from another document. But I'm going to use a system variable, and that's going to grab the current work coordinate position of wherever I'm at. Right? So she's moving down, she's going to grab that position, and I'm going to say, well, is this equal to, or in my case, I think I'm going to use a greater than or less than my R variable. I guess I could have hard-coded the, uh, the value of negative 5 here as well. Uh, that's a possibility. I think it was a little cleaner just to use the R variable. So what I'm doing is I'm saying, hey, once I stop, right, because she's going to move until the trigger switches at that moment in time, I'm looking at the current position in Z, and I'm checking to see if it's greater than or less than Z, uh, or greater than or less than R1, which is my Z of negative 5 mil. So this statement now can be used in both conditions or both areas. Now, if we are going to come down and we are greater than or less than, we're not achieving the full position, then I'm probably in an error case. So here I can just put a quick little go to F, meaning go to forward, and I'm going to call this error one. Now, where is error one? I haven't created it yet. So I'm going to come down past my M30. I can put it anywhere I want. I'm going to create a label, error one. I have to put a colon past the label. That's the syntax of creating labels. And now I'm going to maybe just give the system a very simple message command to say, um, clamp not removed, right? Anything you want to make it readable. Whenever you, you create this, I want to create a quick little trap. So if I do get into this area case, I would have to reset the machine to clear the trap. So here I can just say program stop first and then do a quick little go to B, let's go to back, and I'm going to tell it to go back to error one. So now I got a little loop right here. So for any reason, uh, my R variable was not achieved, then I'm going to drop down to this little loop. And the only way for an operator to clear it, it would be hit reset. Now, if everything's OK, right, then I can do an else. Probably want to maybe do a retract. So we'll do a quick G0, Z back to 10. And then when I'm all said and done, give it an end if completing my logic command. And then the rest of this could now be duplicated for my next check. So let's come down here. We'll put it right there. All right. And then at the very end, I could maybe just say a message. All good. <laughs> or whatever you want, whatever you want your message to be. So, so now I have a cond condition or scenario where potentially I could validate whether or not I'm going to hit something. So let's try this. Let's see what it does at first. So if I run it, I come down, I hit, it checked and said, hey, you're not at five. You're some number other than five, negative five. So you must be in the error condition. It dropped into my little loop, clamp not removed. I continue to hit cycle start. It can't go by it. It's just looping in this little area. So the only way for me to clear this check, hit reset. And now I got to, you know, now the operator has to come in. So, so what if I want to see the other behavior, right? So now I can come down and I'm going to change the order of these. So I'm going to hit my good one first and then my bad one. Check the difference in the logic. All right. So here, we can go execute, cycle start. Now it's coming all the way down. It was happy. It got to my M0, it got all the way through the logic. I go to the next one. The next one still fails. So that looks OK. Reset it. And just to get all the way through, maybe I have two positive checks. So two good checks. So it comes down. Everything looks OK. Do it again. I'm on the bottom statement. Everything looks OK. Gets to my all good. 
and I am happy. Did I get my message to pop up? Let me see. Paying attention. Oh, I will if I had a program stop after it's just hitting the uh, M30 and continuing on. So that's just, a, I would have needed a stop again to get my, to give it enough time to display my message. But now I'm going through and I can continue on. So if you look at the logic again, here I said um, greater than or less than just saying, hey, if it's not five, um, in this case, really, I would be something less than. Uh, so I don't even really need the greater than, right? I could just do a less than command. And this should still all work the same. So I'm going to make my second one be in a failed state. And I will try it. That's my first check, uh, positive, seems OK. Second check. Oh, I think I got my sign back. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, no, I just had the sign backwards. Um, but either way, you know, it's kind of six of one half dozen of the other as far as how I would want to proceed. But this is just a clean, simple way for me to start to create little traps. Um, so, you know, the, the trick here using a system variable to capture my current position. Now I was capturing the current position of Z. Uh, I could replace this with X or Y or, or one of my rotary axes if I was on a five axis machine, let's say. Um, and then just, just deciding you know, where you're expecting the probe to go, you are gonna have to give it you know, an end position. All right, so, so that's kind of how I would, uh, I would approach this. Um, the question was posed from a customer, so I'm going to send this over to him and, and hopefully it helps him out. And for you guys, if this, uh, if this is something you're going to try to do, I would, uh, I would challenge you to give it a whirl. All right. Have a great day.